Hey everybody, Jason Sobel again. Uh, today I'm doing the uh, Man Who Laughs or Batman Who Laughs, and uh, you're looking at a quick version of my drawing process. A really sped up uh, digital drawing. Started off with pencils, going back in with inks, uh, using some uh, marker, some digital marker, in order to get the, the fuzzy and blurry effect. Uh, lowering that opacity in order to get that gray and then going back in with uh, more of a fine point pen in order to get all those finer lines uh, doing some splash across the background um, with uh, one of my filters I like to use and there we go finished piece uh, took overall about a half hour to do but what you're getting ready to see is uh, you're, you're looking at the black and white still, but I'm getting ready to color it. So I decided uh, I, I use Copics when I do coloring with markers. I prefer the Copics. And I'm using cool grays for the uh, metal around his face. And uh, I'm starting off with uh, pretty sure that's a cool uh, gray one. And think about the light sourcing uh, very important when you're using color um, I don't do as much in the way of black when I know I'm doing color I like to leave a lot of things up for the color so I had to pick a, a light source that was toward the top to go along with that hint of white that is going to be uh, that you can currently see at the top but will that'll be covered with a lot of gray later so again I'm using the cooler grays for the metal around his face and I'm going right now, even though it looks like I'm changing colors, I'm not. I'm just going back over some other areas. Once the marker dries, going back over will help to blend, but it also uh, darkens up the color, <clears throat> makes it just a little bit more intense, which is a good thing. And again, picking those lines, I'm using a chisel tip at the moment. I like the chisel tip for the white area. Uh, it allows me to go in and just get a large uh, block of color, and I can also use it for that fine edge. The chisel does have the varied edges for a reason. It's slightly feathered, uh, which allows me here to get some what we call hatching. Hatching is straight lines. And uh, those that hatching will uh, give it a little bit of texture and will allow it to be blended later just a bit. Not bad for one color. Now uh, going in with something just a little bit darker, doing the fine line, trying to really show that the light is coming from the right side of the paper by going in with my darker grays on the left. Notice with that finer point, I am able to get in there and, and get some, some nice line, adding some textured, the uh, kind of aging of the metal and the light. Again, changing that color up and going in with a different tip. Now going back in with a lighter one. And people ask me all the time, well, you know, why do you when you use the markers? Do you go back over your darkers with your light or whatever undercoat you use with the light? Why would you go back in with the dark and then go back to the light? The answer is that it blends. It blends much smoother when you are using two or three colors and then going back in with the lighter. Uh, in order to create that blend. If I went back in with the darker, I'd cover everything. I don't want to do that. The, the goal is not to cover. The goal is to make it smooth. So a lot of the hatching, in which was very visible before over that center spike right over the nose and, and the center of the mouth, that's all gone now uh, because of the blend. And I used a, uh, a gray one for that blend. I'm using a gray zero right now just to give a little bit of, of a gray look to the whitish skin of uh, the man who laughs. So gray zero is really hard to see, uh, even up close. But it is, again, a nice layer in order for me to build on and a great way for me just to get a hint of color. So look at how I don't want to color everything. I like to leave things as the light would hit them. So there are creases and folds in the skin, 
Those creases and folds should have darker lines. The other areas might be exposed to the light just a little bit more, so we see uh, less of them. And notice now I'm, I'm going in with uh, some warm grays that jumped ahead just a little bit. Going in with warm grays, doing all of the uh, leather that he's wearing in a warmer gray. Main reason why, it's real simple. Uh, you just gotta kinda pick. You know, the leathers could have been cool, the metal could have been warm, uh, but I'm choosing it to do vice versa. The idea is to separate it. I'm doing the piece that is mostly gray, uh, despite the red and the orange and things that'll pop into it in a little bit, it is mostly gray. So uh, to be able to separate the outfit from the metal is key. Otherwise, everything would just look the same. So on a totally different note, while I'm uh, working on this, you can watch me kind of just fill in all that spot with a warm gray, pretty sure it's a warm gray too. Um, I'm gonna be making all of these pieces that I draw in color available on my website in the near future. Uh, but if there's something that you're interested in, just hit me up. And if there's something that you wanna see me work on, please leave a comment. Uh, I, I'm happy to take uh, suggestions for things to do on the program. And if it's something that you really like, then of course, if you're interested, just let me know and I can, uh, I can save it for you uh, and uh, we, can, we can work that out. Um, so of course, I, I'm an artist, working artist, so the work is always available for purchase. Uh, and if you see me do it on this program, uh, it's either already sold or it's available and I really just would be happy to get the artwork out there more. Um, so in order to help out with that, here's something that I'm, I'm going to be kind of uh, doing for the next month or so and we'll, we'll see how, uh, how it goes. Um, my goal is to get a lot more people who have been watching the videos but not leaving comments or following to, uh, to start doing that. So what I want to do, I want to start offering up free prints. We're going to do once a video, uh, or once a week, excuse me, I'm going to give people who comment on my videos and follow my page uh, an opportunity to be put into a raffle for a free print. Um, the prints are probably not the, the artwork that you see me working on in these pieces because very few of these will actually be turned into prints. These are all... Uh, hand pieces, one of ones, meaning there's only one that exists. I have no intention of copying these, um, at least not uh, not as a general rule. Uh, general rule, we're just going to allow them to be individual pieces by themselves. Um, so if you leave a comment and if you follow uh, the page, then you will be entered into a weekly raffle drawing, if you will, uh, to get a free print and uh, as long as you're in the US I'm happy to ship it to you and so again the print is on me um, again I just I want to be able to get you to follow and leave a comment notice how I'm using a different color a darker warm gray similar to how I did with the mask I'm going in now with the cowl and with the leather uh, lapels on the side of the jacket and the leather neck piece from the shirt and going in with that darker, so, so I used a warmer, a warm gray three to begin with, went in with a warm gray four, now hitting a warm gray, I think I jumped right past five, went to six, just to get a, a larger contrast. And I notice I'm not using as much of that, at least not in the head right away. Um, using this right now just to kind of get smaller areas to build shadow, because it is a huge jump. It's not something that you want to just throw right over it, but something you want to use sparingly in the deeper areas of shadow. Um, so it's, you end up getting a jump from like a one to a three or even a four and then up to a six. And then that black uh, is a big jump from warm gray six, but it's, it's a, a couple of steps. It's really not too big of a jump from warm gray nine to black. So jumping from warm gray six up to the black is just a couple of steps but it, it's a nice contrast. So I got three different grays plus the black. You're really working at like really four colors and there I am adding a, uh, another layer in there. So getting just that one extra step darker. So we really have now uh, four grays and a black. Uh, and with blending, you know, a lot of times just a little bit of blend with those three or four colors and it actually looks like you've got a lot more.
I, what I remember doing about this piece that was kind of cool as I colored it, uh, and you'll see more toward the end, I started using some cooler grays and even some gray violets to add just a hint of purple feel to the cowl. Now you can notice I'm going with kind of, a, there's that, that first purple violet right there. I'm kind of sweeping through. It not only again does that blend because it's so light, but it adds just that hint of purple when you're blending. And there we go, going back in. So that purple or that gray uh, specifically that I'm using there on that blend, uh, I went from a, a BV23 called uh, the grayish lavender up to the BV25, which is the grayish violet. I'm using that all over the cowl, all over the leather, essentially. So it's still a warm uh, gray piece as far as the clothing goes, but adding that little bit of that grayish violet and the grayish lavender cools it down. So it does feel like it's a little bit more harmonious with the spikes, but not too harmonious. Because again, I, I like that idea of separation. And right now, all that gray looks like it goes together with that background. Um, which was again done using a, a tool uh, that I've kind of played with over the last year or so, and I really enjoy using for digital backgrounds. That is something that I recommend, is if you are doing any kind of digital work at all, don't, uh, you know, use the standard brushes, learn how to use the standard tools and things, uh, but learn how to play with them a little bit and find ways that you like them. Uh, I don't sell my brushes. I don't play with them as far as uh, using that as a marketing thing. I like mine, and I I won't share them, but I will certainly teach people, um, if I'm face-to-face -face with them, how to manipulate a little bit in order to get the brushes they want. I use Procreate on my iPad Pro, and it uh, allows me a lot of maneuverability and a lot of flexibility with messing with my brushes. Notice how I'm using the uh, warm gray now inside the cool in order to add some texture, just like I used that coolish uh, gray violet and, and gray lavender in the cowl, I'm now using the warm gray in the spike faceplate. So again, it's about going back and forth. It's a little bit of balance. And we have a jump over to uh, trying to get the gums and the skin around the teeth. So start with a really light pink. Uh, for that first light pink, I used a uh, a V1, V01, which is just your basic, 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 uh, it's a Heath pink. But then I went back in with a couple of, oh, there's me dropping some markers. I went back in with uh, some different pinks, like a, uh, that second one you see is me using a, the RV11, which is just your basic pink. But now going in with uh, level three, which was the RV95. Uh, RV95 is also called the Baby Blossoms. So I've got a couple other pinks and, and violets that I will occasionally use, but uh, those are the three that I really use when I'm trying to just go with pinks. If I'm trying to go with more of a purple, then I've got an RV93 called the Smoky Purple. Um, and it, there we go. I was about to say, adding in the fourth one there. That's my na uh, the Lipstick Natural E04, and now jumping into the lips. I didn't do a lot of blending in the gums because I really wanted that high contrast. Unlike the gray of the cowl, the gray of the spike, I wanted a high contrast. There we go. So jumping into those lips, <clears throat> they uh, should really pop compared to the gums. So I start off using the R24, which is one of my favorite reds to start with. It's got a little bit of uh, a dry edge to it, but then it... It is great for layering. Uh, going in now with a hint of the, uh, let me get a look of which one that is. That is going to be the R35, which is uh, called Coral. So again, start off with R24, which is Prawn. Jumping in with the 35 is my second layer, Coral. And then moving over to the r 89 for dark red. Now the R89 dark red, I have like four colors that are really all similar. The 89, 
the 39, which is Garnet, the uh, RV69, which is Peony, and R59, which is Cardinal. Uh, they are slightly different. Uh, personally, I have an affinity for the uh, Garnet, but that's for uh, purely collegial reasons. Uh, went to Florida State, so Garnet and Gold is pretty much a part of my normal repertoire. Uh, yeah, getting in there, getting those lips. Notice again how they're darker on that left side. Why? Because the light is coming from the right side. So starting with a real basic light yellow, super light. In fact, so light that it's even called pale yellow. That's a Y11 for that layer of the teeth. And I'm going to be using some other uh, yellows to kind of accentuate. I love to jump in with a much darker uh, yellow, which is it's kind of a creamy one. It's called a buttercup yellow, Y21. One of my favorite ones to use for really dark mustardy yellows. Um, not a brown mustard, but really just thick. And then I go in with a little bit of a, an actual brown. So pretty sure that I used an E31 uh, brick beige to go in with some of that there for the value. But I know that I'm going to be using a number of different yellows on the teeth and in, in the uh, background later. So if you haven't caught yet between uh, maybe you watched the Skeletor and or maybe you're watching this one, there we go, so some orange. Um, I like to keep color families tight. So if I'm using uh, yellows and oranges in the teeth or reds in the lips, uh, since they're so high contrast to the grays, uh, if you know somebody asked me recently hey how do you pick your backgrounds um, and thanks for that that comment uh, Anthony um, when I think about backgrounds a I love splattered and designs I love to do things that are highly textured sometimes industrial sometimes organic it really all depends on the piece um, but when it think comes to color my number one concern with color in the backgrounds, if I'm not doing a scene or a backdrop that's very specific, if I'm just doing some, I'm going to call it fairly generic, just dropped in background. Oh, by the way, I'm using that same uh, brick beige now to add, again, some weathering and some brown weathering to that metal. The, back to the background, which you're going to see me start shortly. If, if I've used color somewhere, it's always a good idea to use it again. Uh, in the art world, we call this harmony when you use the same element in multiple ways and it just makes things go together well. So, for example, using the brown that I used to really darken in some of the corners of the teeth, uh, back again in the, um, the metal, using the cool gray on top of the warm gray for the clothes, but then using the warm on top of the cool in the, uh, the metal visor. You know, those are just the things that really force the piece to come together. Um, so right now I'm using an orange over that background. And again, those oranges, I used some of them slightly in the teeth. So it's just using that exact same color again. And some people, I even I, when I was kind of trying to look at the camera as I was coloring this, I kept recognizing how many different things were coming out of the woodwork as I went in there with that orange. Uh, which, by the way, that first layer of orange is a uh, basic YR. So that's a yellow, red, zero, two, light orange. But look at all the different colors that are coming out of it. And that's because of me dropping in that highly textured, uh, really, really just rusty but organic background that had so many grays and blacks and things that were kind of in there but hidden. Uh, you couldn't see all of it, but as soon as you added color over it, bam, all those little values just really come out. So the, the piece, it kind of just looks like this crazy chaotic fire of, of oranges now. And it's really, it was just a really cool filter uh, done with two different opacities and uh, then dropping a single color over it, even though right now it does look like, again, it looks like multiple colors. So far, all I've done is a basic uh, light orange. So again, if, if you're figuring out what I'm talking about there, again, the idea was, how do I pick my backgrounds? Uh, one, I like to think about generic organics or industrial kind of just highly textured things, unless it's a planned uh, location. And I like to use colors that I've used somewhere else. So the oranges that I've used in the teeth, along with those yellows, I'm using the same exact ones again. 
I did add a couple of yellows to the piece, uh, which you'll see just to get a blending. Here we go. So jumping in with, uh, that would be a yellow 15, uh, which is a big fan of as well. It's nice and golden. That's the cadmium. Also one of my favorite uh, yellows to paint with. For those of you who are painters know the importance of a good cadmium yellow. And maybe in another video, I will talk about that. Maybe I could be persuaded to do a, uh, a limited color palette painting at one point on YouTube. But we'll, we'll leave the Zorn palettes and all those other palettes for another time. Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about, and some of you will um, maybe pester me to in, inspire me to, to actually uh, go through the, the interesting professional hassle. It's a good professional hassle, but limited palettes are tough. All right, so we're adding more yellow just to blend that together, and it really looks like there's just that is a beautiful, chaotic fire going on behind uh, the man who laughs now. So again, um, we're, we're getting closer to the end. What I'm really hoping that you all will do is think about your marker color choices, think about the idea of harmony, think about textures, the importance of your, your brush stroke, and creating uh, those textures. But more importantly for right now, um, talk to me, Live, give me some feedback, uh, like the YouTube page, like the video, leave a comment, and you'll be entered into a drawing for a free print. I want to give uh, one away every week for at least the next month or so. Uh, just really want to get people to know who I am and start sharing the artwork. I've been doing this for a long time professionally and just starting to get into this whole new digital age. Uh, one of my favorite tools, as you're seeing me use here, is a white gel pen. They're super cheap. They do dry out pretty quickly, so you know I tend to have a lot of them in stock, and as one dries, I'm ready to go with another. Uh, but I use them to add white highlights to things. Now, the, some of the same pinks that I used in the gums, I'm now using in the skin. And you're thinking, wow, that looks really weird to have that pink in there. Well, again, I'm just adding a little bit of pink to certain areas, um, almost like a bit of a trickle of bloody drool. Uh, and a little bit of a, around the gum, but watch, I'm going to go back in with a, uh, with a gray and I'm going to blend that up. So it should be that that blend should be starting any second. There we go. So grabbing that, that gray and look at how going over that really blends that, that pink in with the gray that I already had. So I'm using again, just a, a, a cool gray one to create that and you get just a hint inside the chin and outside the lips of that pink still. And now I'm using that white to go back in and re-highlight some areas to clean up that white that was there previously. And in the very near future, uh, this man who laughs uh, will be available as a PDF uh, for download on my website, um, just the black and white, so that you can color along with me. As soon as it's available, you'll be able to, again, download that PDF and color along with me. So like the video, share it with your friends, leave a comment, and download and color with me. Have a great one, everybody. Hey, everybody. Jason Sobel here. Just shooting a little bit of live footage at the end of the video in order to say thanks for joining. Again, just hoping that you will remember to check out the uh, Instagram, which is just Jason Sobel, and uh, look for this ugly mug and you'll know you found it. And uh, that way you can like a lot of the stuff I'm doing as I'm doing it. Uh, really before the videos are even shot, you'll be able to see step-by-step, -step, uh, usually some progress shots. And make sure you like the video, follow the page on uh, YouTube, and leave a comment. And if you do those things, then you will be entered into a once a week drawing for a free print. I will send a print uh, to you as long as you are in the continental United States. And uh, that's my way of saying thank you. Don't forget to share it with your friends, share the link in order to get them the opportunity to win. So this is the, uh, the man who laughs that I finished in the video you just watched. And uh, again, this is available. I have not uh, gotten rid of that or sold it yet, but coming soon to the brand new, about to be totally updated, uh, jasonsobelart.com. You'll be able to find that and so many other uh, black and white PDFs uh, all available for, for you. So you'll be able to download them and you can color along with me. Thanks so much. I hope you have a great one. I hope you enjoyed the video and that it was helpful. Take care.